Good morning and welcome to this morning's daily reflection. In my last reflection from an earlier chapter from the intriguing book of Daniel, I told how the book fairly accurately described much of the culture and history of the 6th century BC Babylon. How it described King Belshazzar, who was unknown to history, which allowed historians to question the historical accuracy of the book until archaeological discoveries in the 19th and 20th centuries confirmed that Belshazzar had indeed been a Babylonian king. Now while the first six chapters read as a story, the final chapters of Daniel, along with the last book of the Bible, Revelation, contain end-time prophecy known as ap apocalyptic writing, which is a product of both Jewish and Christian writing that foretells supernaturally inspired cataclysmic events that will transpire at the end of the world. Such as one of today's readings, Daniel chapter 8. It's a long, it's a long chapter, but here are the first few verses. During the third year of King Belshazzar's reign, I, Daniel, saw another vision, following the one that had already appeared to me. In this vision, I was at the fortress of Susa, in the fortress of in the province of Elam, standing beside the U Ulai River. As I looked up, I saw a ram with two long horns standing beside the river. One of the horns was long, longer than the other, even though it, it had grown later than the other one. The ram butted everything out of its way in the west, to the north, and to the south, and no one could stand against him or help his victims. He did as he pleased and became very great. Now, while I was watching, suddenly a male goat appeared from the west, crossing the land so swiftly that he didn't even touch the ground. The goat, which had one very large horn between its eyes, headed toward the two-horned ram that I had seen standing beside the river, rushing at him in a rage. The goat charged furiously at the ram and struck him, breaking off both his horns. Now the ram was helpless, and the goat knocked him down and trampled him. No one could rescue the ram from the goat's power. The goat became very powerful, but at the height of his power, his large horn was broken off. In the large horn's price grew four prominent horns, pointing in four directions of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Now those verses, as I said, might mean less than a child's nursery rhyme, but this is the way apocalyptic writing was written. So what does it mean? I saw a ram with two long horns standing by the river. The ram butted everything out of the way, to the west, to the north and to the south. The two-horned ram was the king, the kings of Media and Persia, who eventually conquered the Babylonian em Empire. Historians have since discovered that the Persian ruler always bore the head of a ram as he stood at the head of his army. A male goat appeared in the west. The goat charged furiously at the ram. The goat knocked him down and trampled him. The male goat is the kingdom of Greece. The goat comes from Greek mythology, when a she-goat appears during the story of the childhood of the god Zeus. The, go the goat became very powerful. This was Alexander the Great. At the height of his power, the large horn was broken off. Alexander died young with no named successor. In the large horn's place grew four prominent horns. When he died, his kingdom was split into four, each led by one of Alexander's powerful Greek generals. At the end of the chapter, we are told how the four generals, who each ruled a portion of Alexander's kingdom, each gave their names to their respective smaller kingdoms. One of these, the Seleucid Empire, was, in, was the region comprising of Syria, Canaan, as well as what was left of Israel. Some generations after this, the Seleucid Empire had a terrible ruler in Antiochus IV, and more of him in a moment. And the chapter ends with, at the end of their rule, when their sin is at its height, a fierce king, a master of intrigue, will rise to power. He will become very strong, but not by his own power. 
he will cause a shocking amount of destruction and succeed in everything he does. He will destroy powerful leaders and devastate the holy people. He will be a master of deception and become arrogant. He will destroy many without warning. He will even take on the prince of princes in battle, but he will be broken, though not by human power. This vision about the 3,200 evenings and mornings is true, but none of those things will happen for a long time, so keep this vision a secret. Then I, Daniel, was overcome and lay sick for several days. Afterwards, I got up and formed my duties for the king, but I was greatly troubled by the vision and could not understand it. Those verses are still the subject of great real discussion and debate. On one hand, did he mean Antiochus IV, who as a ruler raided a temple in Jerusalem, stealing its treasures, setting up an altar to Zeus in the temple, and sacrificing pigs on the altar? And when the Jews expressed their outrage over the profaning of their temple, Antiochus responded by slaughtering a great number of Jews and selling others into slavery. Or are they a warning of what is to come with the Prince of Princes, a reference to Jesus? We are left with two theories here. One, there are many today that hold the belief that the book of Daniel is largely fictional, mainly because of the modern assumption that long-range predictive prophecy is impossible. Therefore, all fulfilled predictions of Daniel had to be written after the events transpired. Secondly, but linguistic evidence such as the Dead Sea Scrolls and Belshazzar as king, who was unknown until the 19th century, tends to throw much of that theory out of the window. So what do you think? So to finish with a prayer, a prayer that is said to be how Daniel would have praised God. Praise God who is God. Praise God, the living God. Praise God, the ruler of the kingdom of heaven. God who made the nations. Praise God, King of kings. Amen. Well, whatever you're doing today, rest of this week, try and do it with a smile on your face. It'll make the day, the week, go better. So until next time, bye for now.